traders it's johnny here at trader x thank you guys so much for tuning back into the channel and today i wanted to provide you guys with another update in terms of how my trading went and so similar to yesterday as you guys can see there was only one thing i was day trading today and that was the inverse etf of the nasdaq ticker symbol sqqq and so i was able to make 100 dollars 21 on that these were my field orders over here with the timestamps on the left the price points that i bought in and out on the right and then the quantity right here in the middle and so to get right into the recap, what I saw pretty much going on this morning was the Nasdaq started to indicate signs of an uptrend, right? So even before this, actually, in the pre-market session, what I noticed was that the Nasdaq was getting rejected by the middle view up, right? So it would peak out all the way up to the middle view up, get rejected and fall to the bottom view up. And it was just continuing this pattern here until ultimately it was able to recover back up to the middle view up. And rather than get rejected and continue this pattern right it was actually starting to change direction and indicate signs of an uptrend and so we saw this thing start to form these lower highs and lower lows and it started to ride the ema line all the way up till market open right and then at market open that's where we see this increase in volume here the buyers were actually able to push the price all the way up to twelve thousand eight hundred twenty three and I personally didn't want to go with the flow and get into TQQQ because I felt like the Nasdaq was overbought and there was potential for it to sell off like it actually did here. And so what made me come to that conclusion exactly? Well, if we look at it on a bit of a bigger time frame, what you'll notice is that the Nasdaq tends to have these aggressive sell-offs, right? It'll have these aggressive sell-offs and then it'll have a period of a few days where direction doesn't become very clear, but it does become more overextended, right? And start to peak out before it sells off again right so after this sell off here what we like i said what we noticed is it'll have a period of a few days where it'll start to you know uptrend and and then ultimately peak out before it starts to continue this sell off and so as we know the past few days of the market have actually been very bullish right so it did actually start to um write the ema line up and then become overextended right and so that's ultimately why i decided not to get into tqqq and you know, think, expect the Nasdaq to continue to rally, uh, although it could have. Um, what I saw going on was it was a bit more overextended given the fact that it was actually uptrending a lot the past few days. So as it continues to uptrend, it, it ends up starting to become less of a good deal, right? And so it'll start to peak out, become more overextended, and then start to pull on back. And so that is how I was able to make my $100 today. So as this thing peaked up right at market open, I saw that it was really struggling to hold right around this area, right? You'll see it, it just continuously was getting rejected aggressively right around these areas. And so once it started to actually get rejected here, I decided to add in with my initial position on the inverse ETF, SQQQ. And then as this thing broke below the EMA, I added more to my position and I was able to close it out somewhere around here. And so that's ultimately what led to me making majority of my money today. And so as you guys can see, you know, it's not like I made the most money today or or did the best job, this thing continued to sell off aggressively all day, right? And I missed out on majority of this play here. But the reason why I decided to call it when I was up $100 is that's my daily goal, right? So this week I'm aiming for a daily goal of 1%. And so I'm trading with $10,000. So 1% of that would be $100. And so after I was able to make my, or hit my daily goal pretty quickly, I decided to just walk away for the day because, you know, right around these areas, I didn't know if it was going to end up bouncing, you know, and and, and starting to change direction and, and I didn't want to risk giving my profit back already right so I was already happy with my performance for the day and that is ultimately why I decided to walk away so I was fine with missing out on all of this but yeah that is ultimately how I was actually able to make money with the Nasdaq selling off and now in terms of my swing position you guys will notice that I have two shares still actively in Tesla and my brother and I bought into these shares at a, an average price of 663 and it is trading at around $734 right now, right? So we were down $50 on the day given the fact that it did pull back. But overall, we are still in the green on it. And in terms of our plan moving forward, if Tesla were to break below the $500 mark, we would cut losses on it simply because that is the most money that we are willing to risk, right? But in terms of when we decide are going to decide to add more to our Tesla position, we do not feel comfortable doing that yet until the Nasdaq really starts to indicate signs of an uptrend. And what do I mean by that exactly? Well, let me go ahead and show you. So as you guys can notice, the past few months, the Nasdaq has been aggressively selling off, right? It'll aggressively sell off, peak back up a bit, and then continue to sell off, right? It'll push up, become overextended again, sell off, push up. So right now, it's looking a bit more overextended, in my opinion, given the fact that it has been 
rejected by the SMA line quite a few times in the past, right? So as we can see, it was rejected right around this area too. And so what we can possibly see is this thing start to sell off and get rejected by the SMA given the previous pattern. But it, that doesn't mean it has to, right? Just because we identified a pattern doesn't mean that the market has to necessarily follow it, right? For all we know, it can actually start to ride the SMA line up, right? And continue to make these uptrends. And so that's ultimately what I'm going to be looking at for tomorrow, whether or not it's going to continue to bleed or, you know, if it's going to start to try to break out of this channel it's been trading in and then start to indicate signs of an uptrend, right? So as of now, big picture, the NASDAQ is still selling off, right? And as we know, Tesla is heavily influenced by the NASDAQ. So whenever the NASDAQ falls, Tesla will fall with it. So why would I decide to add more money into something that is decreasing in value over time, right? It wouldn't make much sense. So what I want to look out for is for it to do the exact opposite. So rather than get rejected by this EMA line, right, and continue to make these lower highs and lower lows, what I want to see happen is, well, if you look at the bigger time frame, I wanted to do something like this. So the NASDAQ has right around these areas was aggressively making these higher highs and higher lows and writing the EMA line up, right? So we're doing the exact opposite. We're writing it down. And so as this thing's writing down, it's bringing down the price of Tesla with it. So I am not going to feel comfortable adding into my Tesla position until this thing starts to indicate signs of an uptrend, right? Rather than get rejected by the EMA, I wanted to start writing the EMA line up. And only until then, I will you know, feel comfortable adding to Tesla. Otherwise, I'm just going to let it be. And like I said, if it breaks below 500, I'll cut losses then because I don't want to be hopeful and just think that it's going to always end up recovering, right? Nothing always has to happen in the stock market. And so there are patterns you can look at in the past that can help you base, you know, the future off of. But like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to play out that way. And so that's why I'm doing my part in managing my risk in, ter in terms of Tesla. And that's why I'm not adding to my position, right? So I am not going to add until the Nasdaq starts forming clear direction of it uptrending. But Yep, that is everything I wanted to cover in today's video. I hope you guys all learned something from it and were able to take something away and hopefully apply it to your trading. But if you guys are new to the channel, we really appreciate a like and subscribe because we are new and, you know, all of that stuff really helps us out. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to cover today. I will be trading tomorrow and posting a recap. So I hope you guys all ended green today and we're enjoying your day today. So I will see you guys in tomorrow's recap. So take care and have a good rest of your day.